for the most part, it's uh, over the course of the whole project, it's about 60-70% sound design. And then somewhere where we're about two-thirds through, we'll start shifting into voice recording. So I'll start bringing in local actors if I can or sending out casting scripts to other casting agencies. And the last third of the project, I sort of switch into voice recording mode. This is the uh, currently unedited session from Max Foncito, recorded in Paris just a few weeks back. He was cast to be the voice of Esbern. He used to be a member of the Blades. I suppose he still is a member of the Blades, and he's been in hiding ever since. And this is kind of a, a little bit of a soliloquy that he's reading to himself as the player encounters him. I used to dream of it. In the dream, I was standing someplace high up, a tower or a mountain. It was always just before dawn. The whole world was in darkness. Then came the flash of light just on the horizon, within the clouds that mark the border between worlds. It could have been lightning, but there was no thunder. In the dream, the sense of foreboding grew, but I could never wake up. Then it came again, this time more distinct, closer. Definitely not lightning. Now it was orange, brilliant orange, the color of hearth and dawn. So we're starting from there, which makes me feel pretty good. Um, that kind of voice, he, with all that richness and character that he already has to it, he could have, he could have read the phone book and, and it would have sounded good. He's got a very, very long film history from very, very serious dramatic movies with all sorts of directors. And then he's in things like uh, Strange Brew. Let's see, he did the voice of Vigo in Ghostbusters 2. So we were very, very lucky to get him, I think, for this game. I got to ask him, why do this now? Why a video game script? And he said he just liked the text. And uh, it wasn't a typical old man role that you might typically get offered once you're of a certain age where you're uh, the old grandfather that no one likes and then you die on page 15 or something like that. It was, this character actually goes somewhere and he takes the player somewhere. And uh, he's very knowledgeable about the subjects the player encounters in trying to figure out what it means to be Dragonborn. He had a lot of fun reading it. He enjoyed reading all the fighting and dying stuff at the end, too, which every character does in our game, since everything can, uh, the player can do anything at any time. Could choose to fight someone, could choose to uh, betray them, could choose to do a favor for them. So uh, I, I was glad he was happy to read all the sorts of things you encounter in a video game script. Uh, he seemed to also really enjoy all the made-up names and places, which you never know. Some people can kind of handle that stuff, and you give them the pronunciation beforehand from the most basic things. You know, we take it for granted that we know everything about all the Elder Scrolls and the games that came before, from the simplest things like Tamriel. But that's a new word to these, you know, to whoever we're bringing on, and maybe we haven't had a lot of time to go over it with them. So we'd give it to him, and he'd chuckle about it. And then he would do it and made it sound like he says it all the time. The main thing I told him was that it's going to be the fundamental difference between reading for a game and reading for a film is that this is going to be out of order, fundamentally. You know, what did someone respond to me here? Well, it depends. And so uh, it, you kind of just throw some of, someone a football in one direction and they run with it. Then we back up and we do it again and now I throw it this way. 